Good morning. Well, it's what they call, well, Winnie the Pooh would call a blustery day, but it's overcast and it's cool. So it's great for doing a bit of physical work, which I'm going to do some of today. I thought I'd show you a few things that I've noticed on the plot this morning. Let's have a look. So the pumpkins, the dieback from the center there is, well, spreading out rapidly and you can see the pumpkins and the squash beneath and all those ones that are turning orangey color now they will rapidly move towards a deeper orange over the coming week or so and they're all winter luxury and small sugar fantastic for making pumpkin pie and there's just oodles of it it's everywhere there's one or two that have been attacked by slugs and if they don't harden up quickly enough they become a feast and you can see there we've got a right old slug population having a go at that one but that's a sacrificial one when the skins get a bit harder then they're safe but there sure is plenty of them in here okay enough of the pumpkins Somebody suggested that I consider using the coriander seed, even though they're not fully prepared and dried yet. And I did just take a couple and they are sort of scrunchy, but absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for that suggestion. I'm gonna have those out today. And I think I'm gonna hang them upside down, use some in their fresh state as they are now and let the others just dry off so i'll just pick the stems carefully of that this is the purple sprouting broccoli that's been put into this bed temporarily because i'm giving this bed up but it will be ready before i have to give it up completely and they're growing nicely and what i'm thinking is in the interest of my forward plans i might just take those six out of there so that I can get on and develop that a little bit later and site those over on that bed where it won't matter that they're growing on and I've got to wait a long time to harvest them. So I've got those six and I've also got another eight in here, some of which are being stripped by caterpillars. It's unbelievable how long the caterpillar population is hanging on. And you can see those two on the right. And here we go, here's all the trouble all in one place. Let's just hook this up. You can see the butterfly there. And we'll have him out of there and released. And in here, on the rib of the leaf, you can see the actual caterpillar. And that's what's decimating these. So now, every time I see them, they're coming out and I'm getting rid of them. So those two, I can't actually see. Yes, I can, I can see the caterpillar. Let's have him. He's only small. There's probably more than one to be fair, but he's there, look. So he's out. And have we got anything on these? I don't think, yeah, we have underneath. But look underneath there as well. Absolutely devastated. I don't think they're going to come back, but we'll see. They go, oh, there he is. Oh, sorry. There he is, look. Little devil. And there's another one there. Now I've got my eye in, I can find them. Can I see one on there? No. Okay. So. Plenty of purple sprouting broccoli and perhaps the opportunity to move those that are down there so that I can get on in that area a bit later on in the season rather than have to wait. And while I was down here, I know my sprouts down here have been well and truly chewed, but I've got some sprouts on the stems, which is marvelous. And we'll see if they come through this will have to be the last area that I work on over here. And I think that'll be just past Christmas. Okay, what else to show you? It's 
So as I say, it's really not customary to take parsnips out of the ground before they've had a really good frost. So this is a bit unusual, but hey, I want stew. So it's happening. There's lots of slugs in this net. They've sort of been trapped in the edge. We'll deal with them in a minute. Right, let's get this net off completely because I really don't think there's gonna be any pests that are gonna harm these now. And all it's doing is inhibiting growth. Take that stinging nettle out as I go. So I always get asked about these nets. This is a bird net, which I think I got off of one of the internet companies, but works very effectively at keeping the cats off and also keeps, well, as we've seen, slugs, which I've got four big ones trying to get in there. Right, here we are. Okay, I'm gonna bring you down a bit closer and we'll have a look at the base of one or two of these parsnips. Go. Let's have a look down here. So I'm really looking for something that's very well established with good green foliage. And there we are, that's looking pretty good. It's about two inches across. I think that'll be fine. They do get a lot bigger in this ground, but they also get a little bit damaged. So what I'm interested to see is whether if taking it a bit earlier gives me a better looking parsnip. And that one, unfortunately, has got lots of branches to the root, so it's not big, but it is clean. And I usually have to take quite a lot of it off. Let's try one more. And again, it's quite branched, but it's a reasonable amount off. I'm gonna need about four of these, I think, to make my stew. So, let's get in there. And then I can leave the others to mature. Yep, same again. So I'm getting a good head on them, which will give me some nice tasty parsnip. And theory is they won't be quite as sweet because they haven't been exposed to a frost, but it will be a good experiment. They're a little bit light. I don't know. I would say, well, turnips, I suppose, given that they're sort of globy. That's a decent one, but already there's a little bit of damage on there. And you can see what then sort of grows and becomes a bigger problem. So that's a row of parsnips out and we'll see what they taste like. Right, here we are. I'm gonna have a little look around, see what we've got. I want to take the bigger carrots if I can. There's one or two that are branching, for sure. Not too worried about that. That looks like a nice one in the back there. What have we got here? I want to pick the best. Show you what can be achieved in the polytunnel. Right, I'm going to go for two at the back. So, my method is to just get the foliage out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Sort of just remove the compost at the surface so that you remove a bit of friction and get hold of the root and pull. Look at that. What a beautiful carrot. And that's a candle F1. And again, I'm picking these a little earlier than normal, but there is no damage on there whatsoever. And when I leave them, you know, through to January time, I can often get a little bit of damage on the sides. So that's that one. One more for the stew. And this one I think is branching. Oh no, that's a slug. It's not branching at all. Ah, oh, yes. 
another perfect carrot. God, aren't they gorgeous? Fine job, good times. Right, Mrs. K wants four Roma plum tomatoes and she only wants the ripe ones because she's gonna try and freeze them. So that'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm just gonna try and pick the most vibrantly red. There we go. There's a few on the floor here where it's drooping over, but they may ripen, we'll see. But there we are. Roma tomatoes at their best. So many of you have said it's not a great season for leeks and that's certainly the case here. And well, I've had many, many good seasons with leeks. I cannot complain, but when it gets to a bad season, you're always a bit disappointed. So there we are, we've got probably 12 leeks in there and I'm gonna pull out the ones that I know are not gonna be any good because they've got this massive fruiting gone to seed sort of head on them and that has that hard core right down the middle. Now some people say they work with that and they still get a bit of food from the plant if they just take that core out and use the rest. And I don't know, I've got lots of food, I'm very lucky. So trying to get a bit out of it in that way is probably not on my agenda. That one I might be able to rescue. There's another one that's got, that one looks like I might get a bit out of it. So I am trying. Now this one's definitely not too thin. And there's another one there. I'm taking these so that we use them first. Then anything that's left could possibly grow on and get a bit thicker. And then I'm gonna choose the ones that have got the most leak body to them so that we get a decent amount for the stew. There we are. That's not a bad leak. Put that one over there. There's another good one there. Right, perhaps one more. That's a decent one. There we go. Okay, so I'll clean those up. There's quite a lot more in here that look like they're a bit troublesome. I might just have one more good one if I can find one. It's uh, a bit thin. That one's gonna be a problem, he's coming out. And that one's a problem, he's coming out. Okay. Put those over there. Can I see anything else that I can take? Yeah. Perhaps this one. This one's got the start of having gone to seed. See if we can rescue a bit of him. Right, net's back on and we'll go from there. I am gonna miss doing this when I give up this part of the plot, but hey, there are some sacrifices. Right, well, no self-respecting corned beef stew is made without some potatoes. And given that I got some lovely Charlotte potatoes, I'm gonna take myself a bucket. Right, let's see what I can get out of here now. So, I think the idea really is to take a medium-sized swede that's between two smaller ones so that they could then perhaps grow on. Right. Yeah, looking good. How about that fella? Nice. So that was a busy half an hour. Just bringing in the corned beef stew crops. I'll show you them now. And 
I've got some tomatoes there, of course, which are just being picked for another purpose, but there we are. That's the core elements of a corned beef stew, notwithstanding the tin of corned beef, of course, which I picked up for £2.19 during the week. So that's, that'll make probably, that'll make a meal for tonight. And there'll probably be one or maybe even two meals goes in the freezer for another day. Fantastic. So you could put other things with this stew. I was looking around the plot thinking, well, what's ready and what could I use? Well, I could use a celeriac. I'm going to get in there in the moment, I think, and have a good look. But yeah, there's some celeriac that's forming quite a nice size root. You could slice up some kale, like this Cavallo Nero. I think I might take a couple of leaves of that. And well, pretty much anything that's ready. You could put beans in it. You could add some cabbage. It's really a base for a great stew. But the purists would say, stick to those ingredients and you've got the makings of a great corned beef stew. Right, I'm going to swing you over here because there's a couple of things to show you. My lily, I do believe it's going to flower again. It looks like it's just about to come out. So fingers crossed, we get a little bit more heat and warm weather and we might get to see that flower as well. And you'll remember these, these were my green tomatoes. Well, they're not really green anymore, are they? And I have had to take a few out that are got a bit mouldy, a bit soft, and there is always that risk when you group them together like this, but there's a good additional supply of tomatoes there a little bit later on after we would finished in the polytunnel, which is good news. Okay, let's go and have a look at those celeriac. So my method with celeriac is to get as big a root as possible. Because as I often say, once you take away the fibrous roots and the foliage, if you haven't got a big root, there's nothing much left to eat. So we'll have a look how these have fared. And what I also do when I get into the bed like this is take away the lower leaves, which sort of split and die back. They come away real easy. They smell gorgeous and lots of people say eat them because they're great in stews. So I don't know, I might take one of these back with some leaves on it and add them to the stew and see what it's like. Because if you don't try these things you never know. And this doesn't take long as you can see I'm literally just pulling them away very easily and just keeps the bed looking good keeps the plant nice and clean and clear and I think it helps bulking up the root because it's not putting any energy into leaves that are well past their best let's say okay there we are the whole bed stripped of its additional leaves in only a couple of seconds really Okay, let's bring you in here and we'll look at the size of these and we'll pull one and see what we've got. Here we go, so you get an idea of the size of them. Those at the back look a little bit smaller. I think this one looks pretty big and I think these two look pretty big. Uh, well, what do you think? Uh, I want to take that one, but my need for keeping things neat says it's got to come from the outside so i'm gonna have this one right let's take him out you can see what i mean by those fibrous roots there's just loads of them and we start to get a bit of worm damage in fact that worm is trying desperately to get inside there we are he can go back in there and if you leave them too long it's a problem now i reckon but that's not enough 
So I'm going to take this one as well. And there you are. Again, lots of fibrous fruit, a root, and you can see there's a pretty good amount of celeriac there. So I'm going to take those two and add them to my stew, I think. Good times. These Cavallo Nero kale are just fantastic. I don't think there's a better crop for taking what you want and moving on, coming back another day, and it's just waiting for you. On and on, just keeps cropping. I'm gonna take the bottom leaves away on some of these where there's a little bit of damage. Not much, and the chickens will have a feast off of these because they do love it. And, and then pick a couple of beautiful, unblemished leaves to go in our stew. And it's quite interesting because, well, these are a bit mature, but the bigger leaves are less crinkled on the bigger plants. I'll show you the difference. I think that'll do us. And literally, those four plants could last, last a family of four for the whole of the year, I'm sure. They'll just go all the way through now to March, April, when they'll probably flower. And by that time, you've got your next lot in. Fantastic plant and food. Right, I can see a snail, so he's coming off. Right, so there we are. And you can see these more crinkly ones on the smaller plants, and they sort of splay out and get a little bit less crinkly as they get more mature and all you do with these is take that spine out with a knife take seconds and you've got two fantastic halves of a leaf which are incredibly tasty especially in things like stews so wonderful My path adjustments are coming on well. Thanks to everybody for their encouragement. This one I've got to be a bit careful of because I've got this barrier in. I always kept that barrier so that when I was strimming the grass, I didn't strim the polytunnel and rip it. But of course, without the grass, that's not necessarily. I'm gonna leave it in, but I suspect it will be rotten all the way along the edge and probably breaking through. So I need to be a bit careful but I'm gonna work my way down here and that'll be my physical for today, apart from planting that broccoli. Right, let's go. Got the heart pumpy, another slug. Oh well, I'm gonna have to think carefully about leveling here because I've got quite a slope, but I can see me perhaps taking it down a little bit and then easing it over. So I get just a gentle gradient. That way all the chippings won't all sort of blow across or find the lowest point, but we'll see how we go. That's for another day, but that's got the grass off the top which is a good job jobbed. And I'm gonna use that grass as I did with the last lot over on this side. So I've dumped a load here just to finish off this corner. These are pretty level now. And I think I'm gonna end up needing some in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is just store it down here and then I can use it as I sweep across later on. So, I think I'll get this corner a bit sorted out and then move the rest of it over on that edge. Okay, time to take this broccoli out. I think I'm gonna get a spade under it actually. I'll make sure then that I don't damage any of the roots. Even better, a fork. Right, you get down quite low on these, so going quite wide. 
there we are that's a decent root ball and i think that'll plant in just perfectly over there make good use of the bed whilst i still got it and means i can get on with this as well that's two these don't seem to have quite the caterpillar damage that those in the bed over there have let's just take off the excess yep good root ball and you can transplant plants like this at this time of year because you're really just growing them on in a nursery bed but once they really start get going you start to see these bigger roots coming out then it really would set them back but I find that I can move things around like this as long as they're not too well developed a lovely root ball on all of these should transplant really well last one there we go and I will plant these in a little bit further down the stem which will give them rigidity in the wind and make good use of the foliage at the top rather than lots of bare stem right let's get those in right i'm going to move this rotted onion tops which are covered in white rot and put it over here which is going to do no harm because every one of my beds has got white rot now and I'm just living with it right I reckon I can get one two three in there and one two three there that'll be just perfect okay I'll get the first one in show you what I'm doing I'm going to check these four caterpillars seems okay and I'm going to get rid of this rather stunted one because it's just not going to come on and I've got plenty so that's coming out get this down fairly deep I'm into some clay now which is the bed of this unfortunately but there we go can go in there and then just give it a firming down and I'll put a bar in here an iron bar pretty much like the others to give it further support right I'll get the others in that's that done and I think it looks a lot better I'm sure they'll thrive there and as long as I keep them carefully staked I'll need to attach them when the winds get a bit higher then that should give us a really good crop come the spring and I got the coriander out as well I'll hang that I think in the garage and we can use the fresh and then let it form into dry seeds as it goes on in time and my stew I've got the additional kale and celeriac Mrs K's being over she's pretty chuffed with that so well if she's chuffed I'm chuffed well that's me done for today on allotments for fun and food and today it's been heavily on the food a little bit of exercise but it's been good looking forward to winter I always enjoy the autumn and the winter as you probably know if you watch my channel well I hope you've had a good week and had some good harvest Dioch and